today and yesterday when I was uh, listening to what you are people doing and what kind of problems you are solving, I thought, okay, I really came from very far from here. And uh, not, not physically, but politically first of all. And I thought that first, before I tell what I wanted to tell you, I would like to give you some context. So if you imagine this, this stage is our planet, and here is the Western Hemisphere, and this is Eastern Hemisphere. So I came somewhere from, let's say, here. It's, uh, it's Ukraine. It's uh, 7,000 uh, kilometers away from New York. And uh, although it, it feels here as it is Iceland in terms of, in terms of temperature, but uh, maybe it's something with global warming. So, um, and uh, my country, is the sport, uh, is my country is the part of uh, former Soviet Union. Uh, this is um, a state with, uh, which obtained its independence only 20 years ago, but still it's a country in transition, unfortunately. And we still have this figurative Berlin War, uh, Wall, which divides us from the democratic and Western civilization, unfortunately. We live in the society where opposition leaders are being imprisoned, where TV channels and press is being censored, and where activists like me is being persecuted by, let's say, secret services in my country. But nonetheless, uh, yesterday I was thinking, but still there are things which make us really close and unite us. And this is probably the understanding that the the mother of the innovation, the real mother of the innovations is the necessity. And the more problems we have, the more innovative we are. So um, here I would like to, to tell you the story about how we use uh, the communication technologies in Ukraine to destroy, to break this figurative Berlin war, walls. Things created by the people, have tendencies to live with their own life. And uh, um, this is probably what internet and technologies, uh, these things of, of type. And very likely that Pentagon one day, many years ago, thought that uh, when they invented the internet and they, when they give it to the societies, uh, they didn't think that one day in many years they hired uh, officer Bradley Manning will use it against them to disclose thousands of uh, secret uh, cables. But uh, the things designed to bring more comfort in our lives sometimes bring big discomfort in other dimensions. And uh, this is uh, probably what happens with iPhones, with mobile technologies, with communication technologies, with codes. They become peaceful weapons for journalists and activists uh, like me. This is a Romanian artist. I like to use his pictures for my presentation. His name is Dan Perjovsky. And he obviously has his own reading of new technologies in our life. Apparently, it's a skeptical uh, view of what devices play a role in our life. But what I, will, what I like about this picture is this, this irony, this latent irony of what things do with our lives, of how things can change our lives without initial meaning that we put in these things. Basically, uh, what communication technologies do, they become our extensions. They extend our powers, they extend our influences, they also extend our weaknesses, but this is not what my presentation is about. And uh, let's say I'm nobody in my country. I, I'm not a football star, I'm not, I'm not a politician, I'm not a rich person who uh, possess, let's say, a TV channel. But if I have something to say, if I have a knowledge to share, if I have talent to convince, and if I have access to Facebook and also a Google group, I can change the country. And this is most wonderful things about technologies and communications in our societies, that they allow to nobodies to change their countries. Uh, even countries like ours, I have to say, and uh, maybe one of the most 
um, difficult thing, things to accept in a country like, like mine is not the lack of the democr democracy and not the lack of the freedoms, but rather the lack of public demand for those freedoms, lack of public's, people's necessity for those freedoms, and uh, because people actually never experience what it is, so they don't know how to live with them. And, uh, uh, but, you know, new media and new technologies, they create new realities. And this is one of the local of understanding of the technologies, that real innovations are those who, first of all and foremost, enable people and citizens, not business and not even the governments. So I would like to tell you my story about how we try to, to use the technologies to, to, to change our country. Um, basically, I am, as a founder of the movement, it's called Chesna Movement, means FAIR. Uh, recent year, uh, last year, we were, we were trying to, to teach our member of the parliaments to push the buttons, literally. What does it mean? Let me explain to you. Uh, our constitution obliges member of the parliaments to vote personally for the legislation, 450 of them. And it means, it presumes that uh, the law will be adopted if uh, there is a majority, 226 votes. But the ridiculous thing is that for 20 years of our independence, Ukrainian independence, none of the convocations of the, our parliaments never demonstrated that ability to, to, to push the button personally. So um, this is what we tried to change last year. So when we created this movement, we decided that, okay, technologies will help us to do that. And uh, first of all, what we did, we probably changed our approach to the elections, to the parliamentary, parliamentary elections we had in 2012. We turned it upside down. We decided not to react on the things, not just to monitor the things, but to build the agenda and to push for it. Push for it. So what we said, Literally, like, uh, symbolically, one year prior to the elections, we said, we as civil society start the elections today and we want personal voting in our country. It, it should change, it should have changed the whole approach of how candidates are nominated, of how legislation are being adopted in the parliament. Why, why there is such a problem, I forgot to say, because, uh, you know, in our parli parliament, very often uh, rich people are just buying the seats in order to secure their business. They are rich guys, they uh, pay, let's say, $5 million for the seat, and they, they are there, but very often they just never appear in the building of the parliament. For five years, for the term of five years service, they never, never just come, just cross the, the building, you know, w walls. Uh, and that's, that's a ridiculous thing. But what we did is, uh, uh, yes, we, we, we did three things, basically. First of all, we collected a database of those uh, proofs that MPs do not do, not do what the uh, con Constitution obliges them to do. So we crowdsourced the proofs uh, of how MPs uh, do not vote personally, videos, either photos, and journalists and bloggers helped us with, helped us with that. Uh, then we created the supporters, supporters all over the country. And first of all, we used obviously Facebook and our Google groups. So whenever our opposition leaders or party leaders come to the regions, first of all, they were asked, okay, if you are running for these elections, you are so good, and if, if you promise those, you know, paradise, why don't you just can't promise that you vote personally as it is in the legislation already? And the third thing we did, we created a huge noise and we extended this noise beyond the, the, beyond the networks, of course. And uh, this is the communication strategy we chose. Uh, and this is what new media does, what helps, uh, helps us, helped us to do. We created a big shadow, you know. This is what new, te what technologies do to us, to, uh, they create a big shadows of small people like me, which are frightening to such power, powerful people, people as our politicians. And uh, despite the fact 
that Ukraine has only 40% of the internet penetration and 80% of the population take the news from the TV channels. We managed to create this public surveillance over the politics. They were asked on the, in the, uh, every region about this person, vote, uh, personal voting, and it became the issue number one of the parliamentary elections in 2012. And uh, we did it. It worked. And from last November, we live in a different country. We live in a country where now it's impossible just for a bunch of technical MPs, for these, as we call them, piano players, the people who demonstrate fantastic ability to, you know, to vote uh, seven, seven times uh, just for seven their colleagues in the party. And, uh, but yeah, I want to say that um, this virtual protest or virtual campaign is not enough, of course, to, to overcome the authoritarian regimes uh, we are living in. And still, iPhones cannot customize the democracy because the new media they face and they meet the old realities. But anyway, even if our victories are not complete, uh, I have to say, and I'm pretty sure, that now in Ukraine, it is not just possible, for example, to adopt the new law on libel, which enables the authority to imprison those independent journalists, different thinking journalists who are not uh, agree with them. Because there are no just majority, there are no 226 votes in our parliament. And uh, this is my message. Yes, we can. Thank you.